Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Mauro Picotto and the story behind his classic Komodo. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Komodo, my interview with Mauro Picotto. Enjoy! Italian DJ and producer Mauro Picotto is a well-known name in the music scene since the 1980s. In my previous interview with him, we already spoke about one of his biggest classics, Lizard. For this week's vlog I asked Mauro if he could share the story behind Komodo, another massive classic which came out back in the year 2000. The breakdown from Komodo is actually based on the track Sweet Lullaby by Deep Forest. So my first question to Mauro was how he came up with the idea to use a part of Sweet Lullaby for Komodo. Oh, I was looking for something to keep a break like Enigma, Sunless, slow down the music in the middle of this melody of Komodo. And I came with the idea to put Sunless of Enigma, but it was not working well. One time I was in a club in Insonia in Pisa and a DJ after me, Ricky Leroy, start with Deep Forest Lala, Sweet Lullaby. And I love the atmosphere they recreate. I just uh, come back in the studio the week after, uh, contact the forest to try to find a deal. They told me no. All right, I did. Okay, I recreate the part without being the same. And we create a new melody with a new, vo with a new vocal. And we did it. At the end of the day, it was new, was original. But because I actually started from the idea, there, we decided to call it Save a Soul and we did a deal with the forest to make everybody happy, but to keep in Komodo completely original, because the melody of Komodo was original, nothing to do with the forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. So who are the singers that do the vocals? Uh, the vocals are actually, uh, again, is a singer from uh, UK that he was at the time, was signed by a big major company. He couldn't sing uh, as a tourist. <laughs> and uh, I went in our studio to sing in the track and then uh, the the, fee, the male vox in the back that you can hear it was his husband but that's why i can't say the name no. now but a lot, a lot of secrets about your your vocal maybe because at the time you know that i didn't have a lot of budget because mm -hmm. they 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 never trust too much uh, a dj as a producer uh, yeah. you know yeah. and also the the idea was to create something that was not so like commercial or popular you know can you imagine if I use uh, like uh, Anita Baker, they would never call the track Mauro Picotto. Yeah, no. That's easy to call it, to use someone that nobody knows. And for me, it was easy, easier to use my name on the track. Yeah, yeah, true. So what, what kind of equipment was used for uh, for Komodo? Sorry? What, what kind of equipment was used for Komodo? Uh, Komodo was the same as Lizard, yeah. like for Iguana. The same bass innovation. Then obviously the riff was a, a combination of uh, some keyboard but with sample on top using the akai at the time because we had three akai in media and uh you, you we was putting the the sound together to create a melody to adding stuff because the, now there's plug that doing that kind of sound but mm -hmm. actually nobody never re recreated new mm -hmm. in fact the people when they ask me oh we want to do a remix we don't have the parts anymore oh nobody has because yeah. actually the backup they are being lost or who knows because they've been so disorganized oh. because i left media record in 2001 mm -hmm. i don't know what they've done yeah. with the big the dot you know yeah. on the on the tape mm -hmm. but there was definitely the part but there was a combination of so many samples. i remember a few of them one of was also a sample of uh one of the the key of the loop of hell or heaven mm -hmm. like but can imagine there was so many bits and so, pieces. So it was like like a different layers. Yeah, different. That's why yeah. there's no there's no there's no like uh, oh no I use uh, the Juno or uh, the North Lead or uh, there's no yeah there was so many different yeah. sample they recreate that uh, maybe that was like even the the, the Jupiter I don't know but it like was a combination of the time. Yeah. It was a good combination. It was amazing. But I remember why the same of Leeds are, as I say we create the the kick of the rolling because i remember the time was crazy to have this mm -hmm. now they put in the 
their drum machine in the club. Everybody's pushing drum every one minute break. There's a boy, that boy. There's a DJ is pressing the drum like in the club to create that vibe. Is a actually now it's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the time was the novelty because yeah. I remember someone on a on a review wrote, "What's the point to put one minute of a drum on a track?" <laughs> Come and tell me now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, do you still have some of your old equipment? Oh no, I sold my last. Uh, I had uh, obviously because when I was a media record, we had the studio with everything that we need. But I remember my last uh, Hakai 1100. I sold it to Sam Paganini. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. That was in the year 2000, I think, even before, if before 2000. And I remember because uh, I felt sad when I sold it. But uh, I hope he still has, but yeah. because he, he, he's been a good luck for me. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think goes upon him because he many, even him is a success. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So most of those tracks were made like in the media record studio. Yeah, most most until 2000. Then after 2000, I just uh, created my own studio in in Torino, and then uh, after 2005, actually, I gave everything to Ricardo because I obviously. For him, was no sense. From he's from Florence, mm -hmm. coming up to Torino every weekend or whatever he can. And me, I was always around the world. I say, just take everything. And he built the studio that I had in Torino in his house. And uh, then I don't know. <laughs> now we because I always work with different studio all around the world. Because mm -hmm. actually, I realized there's so many studio, but there's not so much good producer. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's easy for me to go when I need to go in the studio yeah, so and make music with uh, with whatever is in the studio. Yeah, so do you work with like a software now a lot or? My, I actually start the idea with my laptop. Very simple with Ableton. Now everybody can use it. Yeah. You know, you're taking inspiration from one track or even even with the track or sometime I recording with the pitch of something that changed completely the sound. Uh, on a, on a track that was not used possible to use before, and from that idea, then I rebuild it with Ableton. And when I have the idea, then I go in the studio, or I send the part to the studio where I work with, and they clean it. Let's say that, and then when I'm ready, then I go in the studio. Yeah, yeah. So in the interview about the lizard, you said like a lizard took you like two hours to produce. Yes. How, how long did it take you to to finish Komodo? Oh, Komodo is actually uh, was not not long to do it because when I, when I was at the time in media record, uh, we still have to taking care of uh, artists like Capella, Clubhouse, and all this um, big brand from the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, they didn't give you so much time to producing track for yourself. That's why we was using to go in the night. Yeah, we had email to go in the night to two, three, four in the morning. To producing the music for our set, but that was been the secret of the success. Yeah, because we was doing stuff that was not existing at the time. Yeah, when the other studio was all producing with a clip of like we have to do this because the radio play this because the the video need to be this. We was making music for us to play in the club. Yeah, even not for release. Yeah, no. lots of track and even when I made the, the album, the others was all the others because was the others. In a way, the other side of uh, of the music because mm -hmm. it was like so much I had compared to what I was doing commercially mm -hmm. that make no sense. But in fact, after so many years, people remember track like what we did in the, the year 2000, the the one we did in the night, for yeah. example. So yeah, Komodo became a top 20 hit in Italy and in Belgium and in the Netherlands and also in the UK. It was a top 10 hit in Germany, Austria, Scotland, Ireland, Switzerland. Um, do you think this is your most successful track? It is definitely the most successful as a single for me because uh, obviously I have my gold track uh, in Germany was over 250,000 yeah. copies just in yeah. Modo. That's, then, that's not bad for a track that you made in a few hours time. No, it was not a few hours because at the end, let's say also a week time. Yeah. Because I remember I had to flew in UK. Then I have to stay in the house of the, this guy that uh, they had the studio next door. And I remember they said, oh no, you can stay here to sleep here. I was happy to go in the hotel. But then, you know, you had dinner. Oh, then we was there, okay. Where is the room? Then I think of the room. It was like a mattress on the floor oh. with a cat. I was like, where well, I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that's memory, it's part of the job. You know, yeah. as I say before, 
at the time they was not treating us as a we don't want to be treated as a special people but mm -hmm. at least give me a bed yeah okay. I, I, you need to you know i, I had my i know where i come from yeah 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 so yeah there's a video clip of Komodo as well uh, on wikipedia it says the music video for the song futures borrow picotto posing as a detect as a detective and yeah. traveling to stop a mysterious woman from killing men she meets so who came up with the idea for the script? Hey, to be honest, this was the, the producer of the video company. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have this idea about, because it all started a bit like randomly. And then actually, because Komodo was so successful that people like it, they they was like, what, what was the story behind that? And then they realized, actually, we maybe can making the, like a, you were an inspector and you was investigate about this woman. Mm -hmm. Because actually, if the music was not successful, the video would have been finished as it was. Yeah, you know. But because that created the curiosity, like, but what was the the story behind? We need to create the story, and that's happened with the second video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, do, do you still remember something from the shooting of the video? Oh, I love to drive in the Ferrari in uh, Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that yeah. because uh, I remember they gave me uh, the, the the first time they gave me like uh, you know these Americans car that I was like what a rubbish one then it's maybe very cool but I'm a very more from modern car mm -hmm. I always like a sports car and I enjoy to to drive in this in Lisbon uh in the place yeah, yeah the enjoying Italian car you know Italian car and then I enjoy it yeah yeah so yeah, another cool TV moment for you was when you went to top of the pops to play Komodo there uh, usually something like this is a playback act uh, with some fake DJing but you actually are the very first DJ who did perform live at the top of the pops and you decided to start the DJ set with your track Baguette instead of Komodo. Why, why did you do that? It happened because uh, first of all, uh, exactly what you say, top of the pop was very famous in the world because the, the, pro, the producer, the artist, they have to sing live. They have to play live or stuff like that. And uh, obviously with my track, that was not existing a band or someone that can play, was impossible, but they want to do something new. And I offered to the producer of at the time, they say, what you could do is say, I can do because I was doing the DMC at the, the year before. So I can come, I can DJ live. My live meaning me actually, actually touching the mix and mm -hmm. not playing CD or like that. And I will play the track during the set. And then they did create this, uh, a bit of a show that was the trend at the time. You were going to Manu Mission in Ibiza. That was like a uh, circle of this. Yeah this that story yeah it. yeah a bit of a show around the dj my man was actually dj for real and then i thought wait a minute i cannot put one track he's not djing to be there with one track three minutes i will look stupid as well all right say let's say that i will play komodo but then i actually when i'm there i actually play a bit different they will not they won't understand yeah. if it's komodo <laughs> or not and that's what i did that's why it's not very uh let's say perfect because it was live but i don't care yeah I, I did what i want i play baguette because it was my new genre where i was going and then i gave komodo and i put a bit of a uh, scratch with uh, gonna get you mm -hmm. there was a bit of me yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 it's uh, actually it's been my crazy but cool experience yeah. because i did actually what i want in a place that was actually like they want a live i gave it live yeah exactly yeah you gave them what they wanted exactly so were you nervous Oh yeah, because uh, obviously it was live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if something was going wrong, uh, it would stay wrong. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, uh, was exciting. Then I was young, you know, feel of enthusiasm yeah. and not caring about anything, you know. Yeah, that's true. It was very, it was very cool. Great memory. So yeah, you're, you're active in the music scene for a long time already. Uh, besides tons of great tracks, you also did remixes for names such as Tiesto, The Pet Shop Boys. Felix, System F, Dumonde, Blank and Jones, Storm, Mike Coblin, York, and many others. What is your favorite own remix? Oh, uh, they, I don't have one to be honest with you because uh, even Tiesto was good, even Guriella, the Out of the Blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I because maybe I have the one that it was more more close on what I was playing because as they say, Pet Shop Boy I did a remix but was again more sing it, was less uh, uh, for my DJ set, was mm -hmm. more for the record company. Yeah, it was, and it was good for the name. Yeah, that, that's what they say. Like these days, they always they always want the synergy of a big name together, another to create 
more play, more click, more mm -hmm. bias. That's not what I was looking for me. And no, no, no. So yeah, speaking of remixes, there are a lot of different versions of remixes uh, from Komodo. Uh, which version do you usually play in your sets? Mine. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, there's so many remixes around the world that even the people come and say, oh, I did a remix, uh, listen how good it is. And when I play work, the people sing in the melody. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, really? They sing in the melody. It's what is new in that. Yeah, and it's, yeah. It's what, the, there's actually nobody actually never come with something really new because Komodo is that melody, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Without that, it's not Komodo. That's the that's point. Is, yeah. uh, we, we already say even before, like you can't, is that kind of track that has has such a strong imprint in the club scene, the, in the commercial scene, that uh, is impossible to... Even some people came with the great idea to change the title to make a new one. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing that kind of... Po, 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 will always be Komodo. Yeah. And you can't. Yeah, exactly. Even I, we released one new one with Molella, for example. We call Fly Eye to Paradise because of the lyrics. But at least the lyrics is nothing to do with Komodo. But we then we, we use the lyrics, the lyrics, the melody of Komodo, and the people then recognize as Komodo. Yeah. yeah. If you could pick whoever you wanted to, to do a new remix of Komodo, who would you pick then and why? Well, I, I would say David Guetta because everything is touching at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's successful. My, that would be just for uh, for uh, my ego in a way. Let's see what he can create. Yeah. Hey. I would be actually surprised if he can do that. Yeah, ne never say never. Oh no, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you recently brought back your Mega Knight parties. Uh, what made you decide to bring back the Mega Knight Knights? The I, Mega I haven't decided. Something has happened because uh, the promoter in Ibiza, Nick, from uh, One More Time I, uh, Ibi, One More Time Ibiza, uh, last year invited me for the closing in September, uh, Eden. And actually, I was like a bit like in September to closing in, in San Antonio. It's weird, but because I had to go in Ibiza for my own reason as well, say, okay, let's do the party. Then right there was so successful. I was shocked, like, say, who is this guy? Like, and then I discovered actually it was even a neighbor of where I had my house in Ibiza. And uh, we become also like friend. Mm -hmm. And he told me, oh, maybe next year we can do one party. And he said, let's see when it's next year. No? And then he come out that uh, he does every Thursday in uh, San Antonio for uh, for one more time Ibiza and uh, even other party on the Thursday. The, and does the Tuesday with Kamer Fat. Then he does the Saturday with Defected. He's obviously someone good. Yeah. And he offered me a, to do one in the uh, 17th of August. And we decided to try the experience. We will do a mega night. We will bring some techno, hard techno, big name for the scene to do the closing set because, uh, uh, as I say, I love techno, but when it's going too far, I need to let's say, wait. Where are we going? We choose this guy that is, uh, I think, is very talented. It would be perfect. Then we will have uh, our uh, live from Ricky. Then will be myself. Then will be Ricky Leroy for the first time, that is a very talented DJ from Italy. And uh, then Gabri Fasano as well for the opening and maybe some other surprise. And uh, this is the lineup. I didn't tell you we is the art one, but because it's a surprise when we will announce the lineup for Ibiza. But it's going to be definitely a special night for people that love techno. The people that want to hear a different night in Ibiza different night because obviously don't come to expect to hear uh, the Ibiza vibe but you will come to listen the real techno yeah yeah I mean if you go to Mega Knight you know what to you know what is Mega Knight about you know Mega Knight has been successful over 10 years in Ibiza we was doing especially in August like three to five thousand people a week and they was all coming for techno not yeah. coming for anything else yeah that's why one off could be great could be nothing but I still confident that uh, should be a good night. Ah, good, good. Yeah, speaking of DJ, I'm sure you have some good stories from the time you did travel uh, all, all around the world. Are, are there any good ones you, you can share? But it's, there's, it happens so many to me that around the world that some is crazy, some is even went too far. Mm -hmm. Some other are like just funny to tell you because I remember, for example, one time after Mega Night and the after party of Mega Night, we have to come back, me and Fasano, from Bibiza to Verona. And uh, 
we are at the airport actually no slept for like uh, two or three days <laughs> like uh, we was like uh, and i remember i was like oh, gabriel i'm not feeling well i'm not feeling all right with this i actually uh, i don't know what's going on with me and he said oh, don't worry i'm gonna go and check to find something for you and i was like okay maybe gonna go on a pharmacy he's gonna come back with some vitamin or something to to rehydrate my body and after five ten minutes he come back with a bottle of rum <laughs> and i was like no he say oh trust me trust me <laughs> anyway we started to do shot at the airport of rum went on the plane we were shouting like you know like uh, the rum started to work at some point uh, we just obviously fell asleep or collapsed completely and arrived in Verona, all the plane was empty. The crew arrived, they called us, you want to stay or you or will you want to go back? <laughs> we wake up, the plane was completely empty. <laughs> well, just me and him sleeping one on top of each other. So bad, like, there's so many. As I say, funny story, good story, there's yeah. too many to say. Uh, maybe I could write a book, yeah, make a movie. Say, yeah, maybe, maybe one day you can write like a biography with... So, you know, I see a few movies about Ibiza, very yeah. cool. <laughs> But there are a story of Ibiza that we live for real. Yeah, yeah. They actually will be more cool than the movie I watched. Yeah, hey, uh, it may, maybe what they. Yeah, but the point is, you need to find the people that know how to do that. Because yeah. when they tell the story, you know, I will tell what's happened and what is there, but then I don't want to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Music Express. See you next time. Ciao. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Mauro Picotto and the story behind Komodo. Mauro, thanks a lot for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I did another interview with Mauro. That one is available on my channel already. And in that one he shared the story behind Lizard, another big Mauro Picotto classic. So make sure to check it out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.